Hey guys, it's Dominic from Rocket Jump Film School. We're back here at Illuminar Rentals in Glendale, California today to go over some grip and electric tools and lingo. So let's uh, head on in and get to it. So behind me in these milk crates is a bunch of grip equipment. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the names of all the different items and what they do really briefly. Just a disclaimer though, the names of the equipment change from region to region, place to place, and crew to crew. Uh, so in the video, I'm just gonna be talking about how I know each piece of equipment. So let's uh, dive right in. So here we have what I call a platypus, also known as a platy or a duckbill. Um, they're used for bounce boards mainly. Press this little switch right here, the lever, to loosen it, open it up to grab the bounce board. Take it, close it, make sure it's tight. It's not loose, not coming off. And just pop it into our C-stand. Boom, there you go, all good. So here, if you want to release the bounce board, like I said, just press the, the lever together, pops it open, boom, done. Okay, so over here, we have Cardellini's. There's two main Cardellini's we got. We have our Cardellini center jaw, because the jaws are in the center, and an end jaw, because the jaws are on the end. Let's go see how they're used. So here we have our end jaw Cardellini. Um, here I'm gonna rig it to this little speed rail, but it can go to anything. It can, anything it can fit the jaws around and clamp to securely, that's what you use a, a Cardellini for. You know, you use it to put gobo heads on the end of it and rig things out, and, and you'll use them for lots of different rigs and whatever. You can hang lights to it, although it's not the first choice to rig a light, but you can do it. But let's show you a couple little things with this guy. And here we have our gobo heads, also known as two and a half inch grip heads. You'll mostly find these on top of C stands with an arm going through them, but you also use them for rigging. So let's go rig something. So here we have our Cardellini that we just rigged up here before. Um, here's our gobo head, our grip head. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and loose. We have all of our knuckles open. I'm gonna slide it right onto the end of the Cardellini here. Tighten it up. And there we have it. Ready to stick a C-stand arm or a light or whatever to rig right to it. If you have the grip head all the way up here like this, um, you'll see at the end of the Cardellini, there's a little hole on there. Occasionally, if you want a safety, you'll take a little cotter pin like this and you'll slide it into the hole. You can fit it in there, boom and that'll prevent gobo head from sliding off, you know, if you have a lot of weight on there or something. Boom, next up, maple clamps. Very similar to Cardellini clamps. Most of the time, at least in my opinion, people will go Cardellini's over Mapers, but they essentially do the same thing. Just bites there, and it gives you a baby pin to attach something to. So here's our Cardellini's, and here's our Mafer clamp. Essentially doing the same thing. Tighten it down, keep tightening. There you go, and you got a fairly solid point. Um, I like the Cardellini's better because they, I don't know, they just feel more solid than a Mayfer clamp. But Mayfers are still good. So up next, we have a four and a half inch grip head, um, also known as a lollipop, which I'm not exactly sure why they call it that. I just assume probably because it's like, um, I don't know, lollipop. Let's go do it. So I'm gonna preface this by saying grips and electrics both have combo stands. Um, and this we have right here is a low combo stand as opposed to our regular combo stand. So over here, it's a lot taller, both used all the time. Electrics have combo stands with no heads in them so they can put their lights into it. And grips, we usually need something like a lollipop to put in there so they can attach their frames and 12 bys and you know all kinds of other tools and stuff. So our junior pin or junior receiver slides right in, locks in like that, tighten it up, Here's our knuckle, give it a little crank so it's nice and tight, doesn't spin around. And here we go. Your combo stand is ready to put some stuff into it. Next up, we're gonna go over some ears. We have our 12 by and 20 by ears I'm gonna show you. So the main part of it is the ear. Obviously, I guess it looks like an ear, but a 12 by ear like this, it goes on square stock. That's why the stock is square, like over here, boom. Square stock, two ears, makes a big 12 by frame. However, your 20 by ears are not square. They go on speed rail. They'll go speed rail slides in here, and then this hooks into, both of them will hook into your grip heads, which we got over here. So obviously here's your ear. It's gonna slide it onto there, and then put it either forward or backwards. That's why you have the, the sideways pieces, just to lock it in. Slide it, tighten it in, boom. And then the pressure just Closes it shut like that and tightens it, so there you go. Here we have some corners. Usually on a big frame that you're gonna build, you will have four corners and two ears. This is essentially how it'll go. Just like that. You'll stick your other speed rail 
in each one, go up to two more corners and another ear just like this and then put it into another stand. And that's how you'll start making your big frames with speed rail. Ears and corners, ears, corners. It's great, good stuff. And over here in this milk crate, we have some baby pipe clamps. There's also junior pipe clamps because this is a junior receiver. A junior pin would go into that one. So we have pipe clamp, baby pipe clamp, junior pipe clamp for baby pins and junior receivers or pins. Just gonna throw these up here. So you wanna make sure you have your bolts all the way loosened so you can get it around your pipe. Me personally, I finger tighten it so you can get to the pipe, it takes a minute. Now take your handy dandy crescent wrench. I'm gonna tighten it, keep tightening. Be careful, you don't wanna over tighten a lot of bolts sometimes because if you over tighten them, they can like bend or break and then you'll never get it out of here, which is never good. What you do is take the safety chain, put it over your pipe because your pipe will normally be safe and locked in. That way, even if this comes out and falls, you still have your pipe holding it up. And then we'll just do it the same with our junior pipe clamp. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, boom. All right, so here we have our baby pipe clamp with our small light, a baby receiver light. What we always do, safety first, we're gonna take our safety chain and just either, go, we're gonna go through here, go through the bale right there, and do this, something like this. And, yeah. okay, safety chain. So now, even if this light falls, which I'm gonna let it fall, at least it'll be safety down to there and it won't fall on an actor or crew member's head. Getting our big lights, junior pins. Ah, okay, as you can see it, little holes. You make sure they align up. So when you put this in, tighten it down. We're gonna take another one of our little pins, special little tool, safety it, just like our cotter pin over there on our gobo head. Slide it through, take your wrench, give it a couple little Boom. Now this light ain't going nowhere. But even though we know it's not going anywhere, you still want to be safe. So your safety chain. Okay. So now lights are safe. It is not going to fall on anyone's head. Up next we have baby grid clamp. So here we have our baby grid clamps. What's the difference between a baby grid clamp and a baby pipe clamp? They do do the same function, baby grid clamps just a lot faster. See, they have the handle up here so you don't have to use your crescent wrench or whatever wrench you have to tighten it up. The bad thing about baby pipe clamps sometimes is if you wrench them too hard, you'll make divots in your speed rail. You just have a hand crank right here and you just tighten it up and boom. Here we go, down, down to the floor. We have our baby nail on plates. Back to the word baby. Obviously, if you've noticed the trend, everything that's called baby has this pin, which is the baby pin. So this is great for drilling into walls, into ceilings, into wood, anything um, to, to rig to, to stick a light or to do some more rigging off of. Also, you use them a lot to make pigeon plates. Um, there's another name for that that is common, beaver board, but you should not call it that anymore. Okay, there we go, boom, look at that. Our pigeon plate, put them in here, baby pin, baby receiver. You'll safety this with a sandbag. Sandbag onto it to make sure it gets kicked, doesn't move. Boom, there you go. You click on your light, uplight a tree or whatever post or whatever you're lighting. You know, it can go anywhere really. It's about as low to the ground as you can get without actually putting it on the ground. There's also a junior nail on, which is the exact same thing, but instead of a baby pin, you have a junior receiver. That's that. Here is a baby to junior adapter, but more commonly referred to as a butt plug. As you can guess, junior pin goes into the junior receiver, and now we make our combo stand into a baby stand, essentially. Good stuff, butt plug. Here we have another extremely important piece of equipment. We have cheese burros. Cheese burro is the actual name for them. Some people call them cheeseburgers, or ches bros, or cheese, did I say cheeseburger? There's two kinds. There is a fixed cheese burrow, 
doesn't swivel, doesn't turn, it's 90 degrees, you'll hear them 90 degree cheese burrow, and the swivel cheese burrow. But they're used to make grids and to essentially attach speed rail to each other in various ways. So let's go this way. And put one on. Here we go. The second one up there. I'm just gonna finger tighten these for quickness sake. There we go. So normally you'll, you'll wrench these down, make them super tight so the rails don't move at all. Um, you use them a lot for rigging and just for advanced rigging. It's good to have the swivel ones in case you have to have like rails offset or you know, it's not exactly 90 degrees. Yeah, they are a handy tool. All right, here's another extremely important tool. It's a C-clamp with baby pins on the end of it. C-clamps come in all kinds of sizes, you know, ranging from, you know, four inch all the way up to 12 inches, one of the bigger ones that I've used. But you essentially use them to rig to beams and things uh, to hang a light from up there, usually, or some rigging. That's pretty much all grips do is rig and light things. So let's go, let's go use it. We're gonna pretend that this is a beam, like a wooden eye beam up top or something, but because I'm not gonna grab a ladder, also it's very tall. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to rig it right here. So before you wanna rig a C-clamp, instead of rigging the C-clamp directly to this, what you wanna do is get some little wood pieces like this called cribbing, uh, at least that's the slang term we call it, and you wanna tape it to the wood or wherever you're gonna have your C-clamp at. So we have our cribbing up there, it's just taped on. Right now we'll take our C-clamp, get it aligned on the wood, Make sure everything's good, and here you're at it, and you just start cranking away at it. Boom. So, you can hear that kind of cracking, which means it's, it's tightening. That's something you definitely don't want to do into someone's actual house if you're filming there. That's why we use the cribbing. So now, there we go, it's pretty sturdy. You can essentially, usually, if you're on the ladder, I usually kind of like pull as hard as I can, kind of like give it my body weight, not my full body weight, but you know, just to see it's pretty sturdy, sturdy enough to put a light on. So when you're on set and somebody goes to you and goes, hey, can you get me a half apple? Don't go back to Crafty, cut an apple in half and bring them a half apple. So no, he's talking about an apple box, which is what we have right here. This is what we call a family of apples. A family of apples just means one of each. There's four apple boxes. We have our full apple box, which is the most used one. We have our half apple box, which is exactly half of the full apple box a quarter apple box, which is a quarter of the full apple box, and a pancake, or a eighth of an apple box. So if somebody asks for a half apple, or a quarter apple, or a pancake, please do not get them food. They will laugh at you, and they will remember it for the rest of your filmmaking career. So with apple boxes, there's three different levels. Um, some people call them one, two, three, but I refer to them as the city way, which is number one flattest, it's the lowest way. This is as low as you can get a full apple box. You call it Los Angeles because it has the most surface area, just like Los Angeles County. So here we go. LA, Chicago, and New York. Boom, apple boxes, sandbags. Here we have our biggest one, which we call 35 pound sandbag, also known as a ball buster. Here's just a regular 20 pound sandbag, one of the most common used ones. You know, you always put sandbags on every stand that you put up so it doesn't get knocked down. And here we have our smallest sandbag, also known as a shot bag. There's all kinds of names for sandbags. People call them whatever they want them. It goes from sand to dirt to bags to beach to, you know, gosh, whatever. I've heard so many different names for them. Ball buster sandbag and shot bag. That's it, That's, those are the three main ones. Thank you guys so much for uh, checking out this video. It really means a lot to me. I uh, just want to reiterate, you know, we went over essentially just the basics of the grip equipment. It's literally a rabbit hole. It just keeps on going. And we just covered the tip of the iceberg. You know, we'll be covering more in other videos to come, so stay tuned with that. Go ahead, if you have any questions at the Rocket Jump, <laughs> go ahead to the Rocket Jump Film School forums and ask me any questions you want. At Dom, uh, I'll answer whatever you want to the best of my abilities because, hey, Everyone's learning, I'm still learning. You need to be learning in life, always be learning. Just big shout out to Illuminar. Thank you so much guys for letting us stay here and use your equipment. Yeah, stay tuned guys, we'll, we'll be back shortly. I'll uh, I don't know, later. <laughs>